Hey, today we will look into catching errors. So I prepared a function called my failing function that throws an error with the message this is an error. And we have here a try catch block where we catch the error and we lock the error message. As you can see, that works fine. So we see that uh, there is this, this is an error message, but we also have the problem that the error by default, when you're not in strict mode, is of type any. And this allows us to put here anything we like. So even things that don't make sense can be written. And then when we execute our code, we will run into an error, which is pretty bad because this error happens at runtime. And as we can see here, the property message of undefined cannot be accessed. So the this does not exist resolves to undefined and we cannot call a message on it. Let's try to narrow down the type. Instead of any, we would like to have error as a type for error, but unfortunately we cannot do that because in a catch clause we can only use any or unknown as a type. So let's try with unknown because unknown is the better version of any and I will show you why. Using unknown will forbid us to use this does not exist but it will also forbid us to use message because the type is unknown. TypeScript doesn't know anything about it. So it disallows us to call properties that it doesn't know about and it doesn't know about any property. That brings us into a situation where we have to find out more about the type. And we can do that by using a type guard. A type guard is a Boolean expression and I will use the instance of type guard here. And that Boolean expression will be executed at runtime. It's a runtime check that tells us then more about the type. So we can check if the error is an instance of the error class, because then it will have the message property as all the instances of error have a message property. After executing our code, we see that this is an error message again. So it worked just fine. We narrowed down the type from unknown to be of type error. Let's see if we can catch instances of custom error classes. So I will write my own error class called my error. This error class will get a constructor and in the constructor we will assign a property. The property is called message. It's public, so publicly available and of type string. I will also prefix the error message with an A so that we know that we go into this if condition. By executing the code, we will see now that Still A is being locked because I forgot to also throw my error. I need to change here in line number six, the error to my error. So now I'm throwing my error and let's see again what will happen if we execute the code. Ha, nothing will happen. We will not run into this if condition. It won't evaluate to true. So the error message won't be locked. Let's see if we can change that by checking for instance of my error. That should just work fine because we know that we throw a my error. So the else if case here should now be tackled. I marked it with B so that we know that it really goes in here. And there it is. That's cool, but we can make it even cooler. We can extend my error from error because this will allow us to catch all the errors with one instance of error check. But first we need to make sure that we call the base class using the super keyword. So I will use super here and then forward our error message to the base class. Of course, I can't do this using the this keyword because I need to call super first. So let's just forward the message as it is without using the this keyword. And then we also don't need this uh, access modifier here. We now have a my error class that is an instance of error because it extends from error. We can prove that by running our code again, because it will show us that it goes into the branch of A. Since it's doing that, we can delete the B branch. The A branch is all we need. It will handle my errors and plain errors. With JavaScript and TypeScript, you can do fancy things. Instead of throwing errors, you can also throw just plain strings. We will do that here in my failing function. We will just throw a string because then our if block won't get active anymore. So we need a new type guard. I will use the type of type guard and I will check if the type of error equals string. Because if that's the case, then 
the type guard will know that error is a string, so it won't have the property message. Yeah, it uh, first is unknown, but after the type guard check, it uh, is a string. So error is a string doesn't have property message then anymore. We can remove it and just block the plain string. Another execution of our code will show now that we go into the case of B and B was the string case. We are throwing strings, catching strings, all good. We've seen now instance of and type of type guard checks. Let's add a third one. And for this, we need an object. This object here will get the property message and in the message we will have our error string. Then we will make a new case and we will check if the error is actually an object because if it is an object, then we can use the in type guard. So I just um, executed the code again. Nothing here is catched. The error is not an instance of error and also not a string. So we need to create a new check to catch that case here. I will try to access message but message doesn't exist on the type because the type here in line number 14 is still unknown, which means we have to narrow it using a type guard. And there is the in type guard. So first of all, I will use the type of type guard and I will check if our error is an object and then I can use in so I can check if the message is in the error object. Yeah, this message in error is a new form of writing a type guard and checking for a property. I will now turn this type check into its own function. So let's create a custom type guard. I will name this type guard has error message. And then we will define the input. The input is an error of type unknown. And now comes a fairly new syntax, which is called error is and then something something. So we will write error is and then the shape that we are expecting. So the shape is then an object with a property that is called message of type string. Let's fix our syntax errors so that we have a valid function expression. We also have to return a value. Let's return a boolean because type guards are usually boolean expressions, which means that in case we match our shape, we will return true. Otherwise, we will return false. One more thing to mention, when you have the strict mode disabled, you will be good, but usually you want to have the strict mode turned on. So let's turn the strict mode on here in our tsconfig.json file. And then when we go back, we will be told that error can be undefined because it's now a strict checking for null objects and it can be undefined because we don't check for existence. So let's simply check for an existence with if error and if error exists and is of type object and has a message as a property, then it has an error message. And our type predicate, this is the one with the is, will be true. Let's put our newly created type guard into action. I will create an if condition. And here I will use the function called has error message that checks the error, which is unknown for an error message. And if that is true, if it has that error message, then it will get this shape thanks to our type predicate. So we can then make use of the message property and lock it to the console. This is what I'm doing now. And there we go. Here's our error message. Since classes in JavaScript TypeScript are based on object prototyping, we can also use that check for instances of the myArror class. So if we throw myArror again, then we will be able to also catch that with our hasArror message type guard. Because if we run type of an instance for myArror, we will get to see object. And then our type guard will get activated. So let's double check that. And here we will see that we still run into the if condition because type of some instance of a class will resolve to object. And then we check for a message property that exists here on our my class um, instance. So that's why we can reuse our type card. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and please do yourself a favor. Whenever you don't know the type of a variable, please use then the type unknown. Don't put it to any, use the type of unknown and implement a type guard 
to narrow down the type when necessary. There is a cool compiler flag dedicated to unknown checks. It's called use unknown in catch variables and it's there to make sure that errors here will be inferred to type unknown and not to type any. Because when you are not in strict mode, let's go back and set the strict mode to false. When you are not in strict mode, then the error here in the catch clause becomes of type any. So you can then do things that uh, can cause troubles. For example, calling something on something which wouldn't exist and um, can potentially crash and you won't be warned about it. So if you have that situation and you cannot turn on strict mode because you might have other parts in the code that need to be reworked, then you can use this compiler flag here and still profit from the check of the catch clause. So here we can set this now to true and this will give us then a check for our catch and it will now assign the error here to unknown and force us to either type the error by narrowing it with a type guard as we did here in the if case or simply avoiding calling properties that we don't know about.